Ditch the store-bought mixes because everything is better when you make it from scratch. Homemade mixes to stock your prepper pantry on a budget. Hey guys, it's Jarrah with Wicked Prepared. Welcome back everyone. Today I'm going to show you how I make some homemade gravy and sauce mixes for the pantry. Most of us turn to pre-made mixes at least once in a while to save some time and get supper on the table a little faster. But convenience mixes can sometimes be a little bit expensive and they often contain ingredients that maybe we'd rather not consume or we can't due to allergies and the like. Making our own mixes means we can invest a little time now to have convenience down the road, but also save some money and control the ingredients we use. If you've seen any of my meal in a jar videos, you've probably seen me using these sauce mixes. There are a few reasons that I really like these sauce mixes. I like knowing that they're gluten-free and non-GMO. I like how easily they mix without clumping even into hot liquid so that I can adjust as I cook. And I really like that as they come packaged in these cans, they have a 10 year shelf life so I can really stock up on them and I know that the contents are protected much more than the gravy packets that I sometimes buy. Mice can't chew through these cans like they can the little packets. If my basement floods, things in cans are pretty safe as long as they don't sit in the water long enough to begin to rest. So I turn to these sauce mixes pretty frequently and when they go on sale I stock up but I always have people in my meal in a jar group who are asking about a substitute for a sauce mix that they don't have because a couple of these mixes are limited time items, meaning that they're only produced once a year and once they sell out, they're gone until the next year. So I wanted to come up with some copycat substitutes that people could make if they couldn't get the sauce mixes they needed for any reason. And then these sauce and gravy mixes are also great to stand on their own at any time you need a sauce or gravy mix. You can see some of these have some pretty fancy names, Volute, Espanol, Bechamel. These are French names. And they're named this way because they're inspired by the classic French mother sauces. I don't want to bore anyone with a culinary history lesson if you're just here for the recipes, but if you're interested, stay tuned till the end of the video and I'll tell you a little bit more about the mother sauces. But for now, just know that those are simply really fancy names for beef gravy, chicken gravy, and classic white sauce. And these are the three sauce mixes that I'm going to be making today. So let's get started. Keep watching to find out which one of these sauces was the hardest to duplicate, which one I recommend buying if at all possible, and which one I prefer my version better and why. There are many ways to thicken a sauce or gravy, but the two most common ways are with flour or with cornstarch. I actually prefer thickening my gravies with the cornstarch because of the properties that it gives the finished sauce. But I worked with cornstarch a lot in developing these sauce mixes because I'm trying to produce something that can be used as an exact swap for the sauce mixes that I use in my recipes. And the ingredients list modified food starch as the thickener. I've had people ask me about this because they've heard bad things about those terms. So I asked the food science team at Thrive. And what I found out is basically the starch that they use comes from corn. And the term modified just means that they've had to modify or change the corn to make the starch out of it. So basically they use cornstarch and they do get their cornstarch from non-GMO corn. So I did start with cornstarch as my base for these recipes because cornstarch has a lot more thickening power than flour does, meaning that you use less cornstarch to thicken the same amount of liquid. And I want these sauce mixes to have the same volume measurements. For example, half a cup of powder will thicken a cup of liquid the same amount for both recipes. This way, these mixes can stand alone as a basic gravy mix, but also if you're following one of my meal in a jar recipes or any other meal in a jar recipe out there and it calls for one of these sauce mixes, you can use one of these recipes in equal amounts and be confident that it's gonna thicken and season the dish the same that the original sauce mix would have. I'm gonna get started with the bechamel sauce powder, which is our basic white sauce powder. And this is really simple. The only ingredients we're gonna need is some instant milk powder, some cornstarch, I've got some heavy cream powder, butter powder, and then just some basic salt and pepper. That's it. You don't need a lot of fancy seasonings for this sauce. This is a very basic sauce. Some people might add a little bit of nutmeg, but really all you need is the basics. Keep it simple. I'm gonna be making really large batches of these. So this one's gonna make about 10 cups. And I will give you instructions for making a smaller batch if you wanna make just a little bit at a time. But I'm gonna make a big batch and keep it on the shelf so whenever I need it, I have it ready. All right, let's go. All right, I'm gonna get started with a nice big bowl to put all of the ingredients into. For this large batch, I'm gonna be using five cups of the instant milk powder. 
Now let me just say before we get going that it is best to start with the freshest ingredients if you're making something like this to put on the shelf. You can see this is really full so I did just open up a brand new can of this instant milk powder and it's the same with my other ingredients. I've opened up brand new um, cans, bottles, packages, whatever which is the best thing you want to start with and that's going to give you the longest possible shelf life on your items. Five cups of the milk powder. And next I'm going to add the cornstarch. I'm going to be doing two and a half cups of the cornstarch. Two and a half. Next I'm going to be adding my butter powder. Now typically when you make a sauce like this, you would begin with a roux where you would cook your flour in some kind of fat, butter or drippings from the meat that you roasted. And so we're going to be putting the butter flavor into the sauce with butter powder. So I'm doing one and a quarter cups of butter powder. There's one and a quarter. And I'm going to be doing the same amount of heavy cream powder. So one and a quarter cups of heavy cream powder. And you can see that the heavy cream powder kind of has a tendency to clump. And that's not really a big deal because it does um, just sort of dissolve and melt down when you're cooking it in the hot liquid. But just because I want it to be evenly distributed, I am going to run it through um, my wire mesh strainer. This is what I do if I want to make sure that it mixes well with something. Um, just pass it through here and it makes it into a very fine powder. I mean it's already a very fine powder but it just gets rid of the clumps, the lumps. So that's one cup and another quarter cup. And next I'm just going to do our seasonings which is just salt and pepper. That's really all you need. This is supposed to be a very simple sauce and that way whatever you use it in, whatever kind of sauce you make from it, whatever kind of recipe you use, you use it in, you can then season the recipe according to what you're making. Start with a simple base. I'm going to be adding five teaspoons of salt which is the same as a tablespoon plus two teaspoons. So there's a tablespoon and two teaspoons. And then for the pepper I'm just going to add two and a half teaspoons. One, two, and a half. So now I've just got to blend this together. Now this is where I get a little bit, this is the one reason I don't really love making big batches of things because I'm always afraid that things won't be evenly distributed or that things will separate in storage. I think that this will be okay. It's all powders, but you want to make sure that you get it really well combined so that every scoop you get is going to have even amounts of every ingredient. Because like I said, this is about 20 batches of the sauce, one cup batches. And this uses a lot of milk powder, so it's a good thing that the milk is on sale 50% off this month because I just ordered a whole nother case of it. And a case is six of these size cans, six gallon size cans. Now let me just mention the cream powder does add some richness and I really like it in this but if you don't happen to have it and you don't want to purchase it or you can't get it then you could just add extra um, milk powder in the same amount that you use the cream powder because you definitely want to keep the same volume so that the measurements are going to be the same for the amount of powder you need. But if you can't get the, the heavy cream powder, go ahead and substitute it with more of the milk powder. And make sure that you're using a milk powder that you like the taste of. Some of those dry milk powders are really pretty hideous tasting. And you don't want to make a sauce because um, the white sauce is largely made up of milk. So you don't want to make a sauce out of a milk you don't enjoy the flavor of. And the other thing is you probably want to make sure that it's an instant version that's going to dissolve quickly. All right, I think this is pretty well mixed. So I'm going to go ahead and get my canister that I'm going to store this in. So these are the jars that I got to put them in. They came with these labels, but I don't like how these are all different. I mean, who wants a random assortment of labels in their pantry? Don't you want all your labels to look the same? So these are the labels that I typically use on my canisters like this, but I feel like they're a little bit big for this. I mean, I could use them, but I thought a little bit smaller would work. So I got another one of these multi-packs. I've had these before. It has all the same shape, but lots of different sizes. So this is about the size of the ones I usually use on the roll. So I'm thinking this size might be good for these jars. The one thing I do like that these jars came with is this white marker because I tested it out right here and it writes really well and it's a lot finer point and easier to write and when you have a lot of small writing to do than what I typically use, which is this. I do like this marker and I've ordered this brand in a narrower point to see how it works. But the white marker that came with these jars is actually really nice. These are the canisters that I got for these gravies. They have the seal, they have the latch. They're nice and tall and thin, so they will be pretty, um, sort of a square shaped 
container so they'll pretty be pretty um, space efficient on the shelf in the pantry. And I got a pretty good deal on them, so I'm excited to try these. Now I'm going to go ahead and add this white sauce mix into the jar that I got. Now these jars hold just under 10 cups, I believe, so I may not fit all of my mix into the jar, but we can individually package some of these also. I've got a canning funnel to help get this in without making too much of a mess. Of course, we can also add half a cup to one of these quarter pint mason jars, and that's going to be enough sauce mix for one cup of water to make one cup of sauce. So this is a half a cup. Should fit in here just about perfectly. There we go. Now I'll show you how we can whip this bechamel mix up into a batch of bechamel sauce or creamy white sauce. I'm just going to do one cup, a one cup batch. So I've got a cup of water here that I'm going to put in my pan and I'm going to use a half a cup of the sauce mix. All right, so I've got a cup of water in my pot and I've got a half a cup of the sauce mix. I'm going to go ahead and put that mix in the pot and I'm going to whisk this and get it all blended before I turn on the heat. Now I am using my induction burner because I can use this right over here on the counter. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this on to pretty high heat. We just need to bring this up to a boil and let it boil just for, you know, a few seconds and it'll thicken right up and be done. And I am going to whisk this constantly just to make sure that, you know, it doesn't um, heat unevenly or scorch on the bottom or any of that. This burner will heat pretty quickly. It actually transfers the heat magnetically right to the bottom of the pot. I think another whisk would actually be better. They don't have one. Well, that is... See how quick that was. And that is pretty much done. Turn that off. You can see that is a beautiful creamy white sauce. And this burner is not hot. Now you can use a sauce like this for a lot of different things. You can use this as the base of a cheese sauce for a macaroni and cheese. You could use this as a country gravy. You could have it with sausage. You could have it over country fried steak, country fried chicken. You could use this as a base to make um, chip beef on toast or you know what, on a shingle that they make with Hamburg and serve over toast. Um, there's any sort of variations of things that you can do with a cream sauce like this. Um, my grandmother used to make salmon pea wiggle with just some canned salmon and some canned peas and a white sauce like this. You can do the same with shrimp. There's all sorts of different wiggles you can make. And of course, with any of these sauces, if you want it a little bit thicker, you can add a little less liquid. And if you want it a little bit thinner, you can add a little bit more liquid or a little bit less powder. So you can adjust these to your liking. Next, I'm going to be doing the velouté mix, which is the chicken gravy mix. And I'm going to be using some flour and some instant milk, some cornstarch, some butter powder, some chicken bouillon. I've got garlic powder, thyme, rosemary, onion powder, and turmeric. Now, the turmeric is just for color, so you don't need to use it if you don't want to. But sometimes homemade gravy mixes can be a little bit pale because the commercial companies might use, um, you know, coloring like caramel coloring and things like that. Thrive actually uses some carrot powder in theirs. So I think that's what they do for color. But I used some turmeric in mine. And I did go with both the cornstarch and the flour. And that's because I really needed to get the volume. When I was using the cornstarch, the amount of powder I needed... Um, for each batch was too little so that it wasn't going to match up with the gravy mix that I'm trying to copycat. So I'm using both for thickening and I thought it came out just fine. All right, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to use my same big bowl that's been cleaned out and I'm going to start with my flour. I'm going to use five cups of flour. Next, I'm going to do my instant milk. I'm going to use two and a half cups of the instant milk. Now milk and dairy is not a common ingredient in a chicken gravy, a typical chicken gravy, but it is in the Thrive gravy that I'm emulating. And it is often added to the French mother sauces, a cream or a milk, a little bit just to give it some richness. So that's what I'm going to do. And it's going to also help with the volume. Now I am going to be adding cornstarch to this one. And I'm going to be using a cup and a quarter of cornstarch. And I'm actually going to be using the same amount of the chicken bouillon, one and a quarter cups. 
And I am going to put the brands of everything that I used down in the description box. So in case you want to use the same brand or so you know what brand I used, some items I do find that it can depend which brand you're using. Some brands are stronger, you know, tangier, just it depends on the, pro the product that you're using. But so I'm going to show you the brands that I used and what I'm doing. You can change to whatever you want, but just remember if your results are different, that could be why. So a cup and a quarter of the chicken bouillon. And then also one and a quarter cups of the butter powder. And next it's going to be all of our seasonings. I'm going to start with onion powder and I'm going to be using five tablespoons of onion powder. Now four tablespoons is a quarter of a cup. So I'm just going to do a quarter cup and then one more tablespoon. There's four tablespoons and then one more tablespoon. And then the garlic powder, I'm doing two and a half teaspoons. One, two, and a half. Now I think the onion powder and the garlic powder are important to this recipe, but the other seasonings, like I mentioned, the turmeric is just going to be for color. I've also got rosemary and thyme, and I think that these give them a nice poultry flavor, a nice Thanksgiving-y kind of flavor, but if you wanted this to be a very, very um, generic plain gravy that you could really use with a lot of different things then you could leave these two out and just go with what we have here and maybe the turmeric for color i am adding these to make it a really nice standalone um you know poultry gravy with a good seasoning in it and it's very little amount but you could leave these out and, and notice i am using ground on both of these ground rosemary and ground thyme rather than like the crumbled leaves because it just is going to mix into the gravy a lot better once again, I will put my sources down in the description box, as always, in case you want to find the exact products I used. So I'm going to be doing two and a half teaspoons of the rosemary, and I'm doing the same measurement of the thyme. And then I'm just doing a teaspoon of the ground turmeric. Remember, this is just for color. It is definitely optional. This brand here, you can see, is very powdery, and it seemed to blend in really well and dissolve really well. Um, I've had, I always put turmeric in my chicken broth if I'm sick. And so sometimes it doesn't dissolve very well and it kind of sinks to the bottom. So I was happy with this brand. And just one teaspoon of this because it is just for color. All right, so now this is ready to be mixed all together just like the other one. We wanna make sure we distribute everything very evenly. It smells very, very good. I love uh, rosemary and thyme. Now I've got to tell you, this was the hardest gravy to mimic and I definitely did not nail this one. Um, I think I got it pretty good with the volume so that the amounts will be equivalent. And this tastes good. It tastes good as a poultry gravy, but it's just not quite this. And I, I'm not sure what the missing element is, but this gravy, I don't think I really fully appreciated all these sauces until I did this little experiment because I made up a batch of each of these two just to sort of taste by itself and to work with. And I tend to mostly use these in my meal in a jar recipes and not really use them as plain gravy very often. Or if I do, then it's over something or mixed with something and you just don't really appreciate the flavor. But this has a really, really great flavor. So I would definitely recommend buying at least this gravy if you can. This is not a limited time, so it's usually available. In fact, right now it is on sale. So I grabbed a case of it. A case of this size can, which this is a quart size can, a case of these is 10. 10 cans is a case in this this size. So I got a case of these. Um, this is definitely my favorite of the sauces and I could not come anywhere close to duplicating this myself. The Espanol, I think I came very, very close. Mine tastes and looks very, very much the same. And the Bechamel, I actually preferred my version better because Thrives is a little bit sweeter. They have sugar in their ingredients and I am not against putting sugar in food if it's warranted, like putting sugar in a tomato sauce to cut the acidity, for example, but I don't believe it belongs in a bechamel or a white sauce. And so I like my version better on this one, but um, on this gravy right here, the chicken gravy, the velouté, I couldn't come close. So just so you know, but I think this is all mixed up and ready to go into the canister. I'm just going to use one of my canning funnels to fill this more easily. Now these should hold a half a cup and this chicken gravy powder is a quarter cup of powder per cup of water. So you could fit about two cups worth of gravy into this container. So this right here is two cups worth of gravy mix. And there we go. And I think these teeny tiny labels will be perfect for these jars. 
Now let's see how we whip up a batch of the Volute chicken gravy. Now I'm going to make a one cup batch of this one also. So I've got my one cup of water. Now this mix for each cup of water only requires a quarter cup of the mix. So a cup of water, quarter cup of gravy mix. And once again, I'm going to get this all whisked in before I turn on the heat. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and turn this on to a pretty high heat. One notch below full heat. Which this induction burner has nine levels of heat. So nine is the hottest, so I turned it down to eight. Once again, I'm going to be keep stirring this, whisking this um, the whole time till it comes to a boil. It's only going to take not very long at all, and I don't want to risk it um, thickening unevenly or scorching on the bottom. Already starting to thicken. This burner is really, really, really amazing. There we go. And we've got our chicken gravy. Turn this off. The final gravy mix that I'm going to make today is going to be the Espanol or the savory beef gravy. And this is very simple too, almost as simple as the bechamel. It's only got four ingredients. I'm going to be using cornstarch, some of our instant milk, some beef bouillon, and some tomato powder. Let's go ahead and get started. Now this gravy mix is more concentrated and you use less. It only takes about um, a sixth of a cup for one cup of water. So I'm not going to be making as much volume. So I'm probably not going to fill the canister like I did with the other um, gravies because it's that would just be a ridiculous amount of gravy because you don't use as much mix to make an equivalent amount of gravy with this one. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to use this same bowl cleaned out. I'm going to start with my cornstarch and I'm going to be doing three cups of cornstarch. One, two, and it looks like I need to go get a little more cornstarch. I'll be right back. Okay, we're back in business. And three cups of cornstarch. And next, I'm going to put in my instant milk. Three cups of this as well. One. Two. Three. And next, I'm adding my beef bouillon. I need one cup of this. One cup of bouillon. And then the last ingredient I need is tomato powder. I'm going to use a cup of tomato powder. Now, like the milk, this isn't necessarily a typical ingredient in beef gravy, but this is going to add some flavor and it's going to add some color. Just like I talked about, a lot of companies might add, you know, some coloring agents to their gravies and you don't necessarily have that in a homemade gravy. So this is going to add some rich color to our gravy. So a cup of tomato powder. And that's it for ingredients, just those four. So I'm going to go ahead and get this blended up. All right, that looks pretty well blended. I've got my last jar. I'm going to go ahead and use this funnel that I used to fill my tomato powder because that little bit of tomato powder is not going to hurt this. Now, if I want to fill an individual jar for this gravy, one third of a cup is going to be two cups worth of gravy. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in there. It's not quite as full as our other jars. Like I mentioned, this is a little bit more concentrated of a powder, but it is equivalent to the Espanol gravy that Thrive Life has because this one is a third of a cup for two cups of water. And there we go. There's our beef gravy mix. Okay, now let's mix up a batch of the Espanol or the beef gravy. Now this, remember, is the thinnest of the gravies. This one mixes up the thinnest. If you wanted it thicker, you could use more powder or more um, or less water, less liquid. Now this one, I'm going to mix up a one cup batch as well. So there's my cup of water. Now a one cup batch of this gravy is a sixth of a cup. And since most of us don't have a sixth of a cup measure, that's the same as two tablespoons plus two teaspoons. So there's one tablespoon, two tablespoons, then one teaspoon and two teaspoons. Or if you're not worried about being that precise, you could just use your third of a cup measure and just try to fill it about halfway full. Or you could do two cups of gravy and use a full third cup. Once again, I'm just whisking this in um, fully before I turn on the heat. And there we go, that's thickening.
Now you can see it is thinner, but it's, it's not like it's thin. It's a nice thickened gravy. Now you could use a beef gravy like this, you know, with your roast beef. You could use this um, to make a stroganoff. You could use this in a beef stew recipe. You could make a nice mushroom sauce out of this. All sorts of different things that you could do with your beef gravy. Now I'm going to show you real quick how to mix up just a small batch of the sauces in case you want just a little bit. So this is how you would mix up a small batch of the bechamel. I've got a quarter cup of the instant milk powder, which is four tablespoons. I've got two tablespoons of cornstarch, which is an eighth of a cup. I've got a tablespoon of butter powder, tablespoon of heavy cream powder, a quarter teaspoon of salt, and an eighth of a teaspoon of pepper. And that's all we need. And that's just about a one cup batch right there. Might be a tiny bit more, but you can multiply and divide both of these recipes to your liking to make just the amount of powder that you want to have on hand at one time. You can make the small batch, you can make the large batch, or you could make anywhere in between. Just um, uses a little bit of math skills to figure it out. And you can make just the exact amount of mix that you want. And now I'm going to show you how to mix up a small batch of the velouté or the chicken gravy. For that, I need a quarter cup of flour, an eighth of a cup or two tablespoons of the instant milk. I've got a tablespoon of cornstarch, a tablespoon of chicken bouillon, a tablespoon of butter powder. I've got three quarters of a teaspoon of uh, onion powder. And then I've got the rest of my seasonings, which is an eighth of a teaspoon of garlic powder, an eighth of a teaspoon of ground rosemary, an eighth of a teaspoon of ground thyme, and a sixteenth of a teaspoon of ground turmeric. So I'm just going to put all that in there. And when I have small amounts like that, I measure it with these measuring spoons right here. And they've got anywhere from a quarter, eighth, sixteenth, thirty second, and sixty fourth of a teaspoon. And it gives them little names, a drop, a smidgen. So it tells me that a sixteenth of a teaspoon is a pinch. So if you don't have a special measuring spoon, then you can go by that. And then I'm just going to whisk this together. And this is about two cups worth um, of gravy mix, a little bit more maybe, but this is a small batch. And like with the others, you can multiply and divide any of these batches to suit the amount of gravy mix that you need to make. And now let's mix up a small batch of the Espanol or the beef gravy. This is a super simple one. I've got a tablespoon of cornstarch, a tablespoon of instant milk powder, a teaspoon of beef bouillon, and a teaspoon of tomato powder. And this is going to make um, pretty much exactly the amount that you need for one cup of water, one cup's worth of gravy. Just mix this all together. So this is about a sixth of a cup. And there we go. That's a small batch of the beef gravy mix. So here are our three sauce and gravy mixes. And there are so many uses for these. I promise to tell you a little bit more about the mother sauces. Today we recognize five mother sauces. The three that we've made today being bechamel, a creamy white sauce, velouté, a blonde gravy made from chicken or pork stock, and espanol, a brown gravy made from roasted beef. Sometimes with the addition of tomato. The two other mother sauces are tomato sauce, which is pretty self-explanatory, and hollandaise sauce, which is made from egg yolks and clarified butter traditionally. These sauces were developed, or at least identified, in the 1800s by a French chef named Auguste Escoffier. The idea behind the mother sauces is that all or most other sauces can be made from these bases. These derivative sauces are known as daughter sauces. You can use a bechamel base to create a cheese sauce, an alfredo sauce, a mornay sauce, or a sausage gravy. Velouté can turn into a mushroom sauce, curry, or white wine sauce. Hollandaise sauce can become a Bernays sauce, and so on and so forth. Some people use a velouté and bechamel combination as a substitute for the cream of soups in recipes. I am planning on doing another video in the future making mixes for the remaining two mother sauces, tomato sauce and hollandaise sauce, as well as many more money and time-saving pantry mixes, so make sure to come back and see me again. If you made it all the way to the end of the video, leave me a French flag down in the comments, and here's a video where you can use two of your DIY sauce mixes in a chicken Florentine meal in a jar. I'm Jarrah with Wicked Prepared. Survive today, thrive tomorrow. We'll see you next time.